Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I'm going to be installing a refrigerator and making a custom enclosure for it and also making the templates for my white quartz countertops. And if you're new here, I've been making videos on this entire van build from start to finish, and I'll have a link in the description for all of the previous episodes. This is the Dometic CRX 110 refrigerator. It's DC and it can also be operated on AC power. I want to build a custom enclosure around it so it'll look built in and match the other cabinets. So what I'll do is I'll build a frame around it and then I can purchase an end panel from the same cabinet manufacturer and stick that end panel on the side of it and it should look identical to the other cabinets. So for this I'm going to be using the half inch sanded plywood and this piece of premium 1x2 from Home Depot. I think it's pine. And I'll use the 1x2 pine to make a face plate and the plywood will go on the sides. I'm just starting with the face plate laid in place and from here I could build the rest of the cabinet around the face plate. You want to make the opening of the face plate about a quarter inch larger than the refrigerator so you're able to slide it in. I just have the face plate connected with some pocket screws and some wood glue. Next I need to scrap a piece of plywood to match the contour of the wall. After cutting along the scribe line, you can see here I have a nice tight fit against the wall. Now when I line up the edge of the plywood with the faceplate, I can just take a pencil line and mark it and then cut it along that line so it'll line up. So here's what it looks like after I've cut it down the size. Nice tight seam along the faceplate. And what I'm going to do is get another one of these end panels like you see on the cabinet here. And then for the faceplate, I just have some paint that I'm going to use to match it like I did on the back of this cabinet here. Now I can just take a straight edge and make a line along the wall here that's even with the top of the cabinet. Just go around where the pencil line is and screw in some wood support beams like I have on the left side here. these little pencil moldings out I'm also going to tighten up this seam here. You can see by the bed over here the molding overlaps the seam and the shiplap. I don't really like the way that looks so I'm going to trim that down. Here's the piece that I trimmed down so it doesn't overlap that seam and the shiplap. I think it looks a little bit better like this. And here's what it looks like after it's all installed. I just need to give it one more coat of paint, but this is pretty much what it's going to look like. Okay, back to the refrigerator cabinet. You can see how I installed all the support structure for the cabinet now. Now I can just screw in the plywood side and nail the face plate into that with some wood glue and some finished nails. Attaching the plywood on the right side to the faceplate, make sure you take into account the end panel that you're going to glue on later. So you'll want to have at least an eighth of an inch reveal. I'm using a piece of wood I cut down as a spacer for the bottom. I've test fitted it and everything looks great, so now I can make the electrical connections. as you're working on the wiring that you remove the fuse from the fuse box so there's no power going through these wires. As soon as I 
plug the fuse in in the back, the refrigerator started working. And it seems to be pretty efficient, but I'll let you know after I've used it for a while if I like it or not. Now I'm just gluing on the end panel with that same construction adhesive I used for the shower wall since I had some left over. It's the Loctite Power Grab Ultimate, and I'll put a link for that in the description below. Now that the cabinets are done, I'm going to start making the templates for the countertops, and I like to use this 8th inch plywood from Home Depot. Now I'm just making the cutouts for the sink and the cooktop. Now I'm sure some of you are thinking that isn't granite a little bit too heavy for a van? which it is true that it's heavier than some of the other materials you can use, but when you take into account the fact that it's almost all cut away for the sink and cooktop, it's really not adding that much weight. I really just have this little piece on the right here and then uh, another piece over the refrigerator. Once I finished the templates for the countertops, I went ahead and cut half inch plywood down to add some additional support underneath the countertops. One really important step you don't want to skip with these refrigerators, you need to put a vent for the compressor so it runs more efficiently, it doesn't overheat. This refrigerator, it does have a vent right here built in, but on top of that, we're going to add another one right here. And I probably could have done this before but then I would have had to cut each panel individually, so I think I'll just mark it now. I'll cut it with the Dremel, and we'll put this in. The other reason I didn't do it earlier is because I couldn't find a small grill at Home Depot. It only had larger ones, so I found this on Amazon. It just took a couple days to arrive. You don't need a huge one. This is 4 by 10 inch. I'll put a link for this. This is more than enough, I think. One other thing I wanted to show real quick, the bed I had to make you know, fairly high to get the mountain bike under. So of course you can use a stool like this to get up there, make it a little easier. But I wanted something a little more permanent and less intrusive. So I wanted to show you something cool that I found. This pop down step, it's really sturdy. It's made for like big rigs, trucks. And I just bolted it into the two by three here. Works great step on it this way or backwards makes uh, getting up to the bed a lot easier and it flips out of the way really easily it was actually pretty hard to find so I'll share a link with you guys if you want to get one a little tip if you want to save money on some stone counters avoid the retail stores and go directly to the fabricators I found these fabricators in Anaheim in California. Also avoid these big slabs of granite here and ask them if they have any remnants like these small cut pieces here. And you're usually able to get a really good deal, probably a fourth or a fifth of the price of what it would be if you went into like a retail store. are here. I have them laying in place. And I think they look great. It's not actually granite. And you can see the thickness is actually only that thickness, but they add an edge on it, which makes it look uh, a lot beefier. Looks pretty cool, I think. Next thing I want to do is install the sink. So I have to silicone the sink onto the stone and have it dry overnight. So I'm going to put some blue tape 
around the edge here where I don't want the silicone to get on. Next I'm going to do the same thing on the edge of the sink. So obviously I have the countertops flipped upside down so that I can glue the sink on top of it now. Okay, now we'll just wait for that to dry overnight. And this countertop, this one's ready to be put in. This one's gonna be easy, there's no faucet or anything. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. That's going to do it for today. There's a lot more to come, so please make sure you hit that subscribe button and also make sure you hit the notification button because a lot of people are complaining that they're not seeing my videos. So if you hit the notification button, that'll ensure that you'll definitely see the next video. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.